During the spring 2020 UK lockdown due to coronavirus, we spoke with a group of Syrian refugees who are now living in the UK. We wanted to see if their experiences of coping through the adversities of the civil war in their homeland in any way prepared them for the difficulties we are all facing right now. And if so, what positives we might take from their shared reflections. Well, when everything happened, we separated, my family lived in another area, we went to the house there, just like a safe area there, there was no any trouble in that area. For me, I didn't stay with him, I went to another area to be a volunteer in school, which we had families live in the classroom because they can't afford to go and rent a house. So we opened the school just to get the family there. So I was volunteering there just to help him with food, cleaning and all of that stuff. So, like organizing all the food and the kitchen. So yeah, we, we separated. I used to see my family every, every weekend just to go there, get a hot shower, wash my clothes, get a nice meal. That's all about. Uh, um, I was in Aleppo and um, I stay in Aleppo without my husband for six months. I, I, we have a big family and uh, I have a lot of aunt, aunties, uh, I have the three uncles, yeah, and uh, yeah, well, I, I haven't seen them from a long time ago, like seven years. You know, in Syria, the re relationship between the members of the family is very, very, very uh, strong. Um, it means, for me, I stay with my parents in all my life. Even when I go to the university, I stay with my, with my parents. So it's not, not usual to leave them and go away from uh, uh, far of them. Oh, oh I, you broke my heart, Stephen, now. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, very sadly, I miss my, my brothers, all of them, my brothers. I miss the art too much. And uh, my friend, I don't have too many friends, but I have maybe three, three friends, yeah. One of them, my cousin. And one from just friend and uh, another one, uh, brother of my cousin. My cousin here as well. Yeah, even my grandpa, my two grandpa from the, my father's side and my mother's side, they passed away. Uh, we haven't even uh, seen them or say goodbye. Uh, but when I left Syria, I know I would not see my parents another time. I can't believe that. Especially uh, when I say bye to my mother, my mother was um, ill in cancer. And when I say bye to her, I know I will never ever see her again. Uh, it was when my when my father he uh, he wanted to uh, escape from there, it was a hardest uh, discussion because uh, first it was dangerous. We might make it or not, but thank God we we make it. We made it and we're out and uh, here I am. Uh, it was difficult, yeah, to to leave your house and what's your belt, for example. My dad he had. He had everything there, like his business, and he left everything. Yeah, yeah, it's difficult. So when I want to leave Aleppo, I, I, still rem I still just thought, how could I leave my parents alone? And my mother, I know she was a very strong woman. She looked after me in all my life. Mm -hmm. She looked after my children. Mm -hmm. So how could I leave her? In when she was in that situation, she needs me. When she when she get a cancer and she was ill, she she needs me. So I can until now I can hear my my mother voice. She just told me, go, leave Aleppo and go and don't look behind you. You should be with your ch with your children. So um, I had no choice but. Leave, leave my parents behind. Sadly, my mother passed away from cancer after five months. So I did not get to see her. Ramadan. Awal ham Ramadan, ayat na hon, mubarak Ramadan, alaykum, inshallah. 
الصحة والعافية بس بتحسي إنه ناقصك شيء هذا الشيء بيؤدي لحزن يعني. But I just wait until a suitable time and go uh, to see to see my father. This is the big hope I I think yeah. I will come back if I have one day in my life. I will come back to my my village. Because after we left, it got worse. That why, but thank God we got we got out because uh, now it's a mess. It's a complete mess.